Hello, and welcome to the Belmont Journal, Belmont's news program and community update. I'm your host, Mike Crowley. And first, let's start with some community announcements. The Belmont Police Department is embarking on a strategic planning process to map out the department's direction for the next five years. As the first step, the department has established a survey of residents, visitors, and people who have a commercial interest in the town of Belmont. The survey provides an opportunity for citizens to comment on current conditions throughout the town. If you'd like to participate, the survey is available through December 4th, uh, 2021. To access it, please go to the survey link at belmontpd.org. The survey is anonymous. This is a call to all Belmont artists. Juliet Jenkins and her neighbor Katia are trying to secure a venue for a pop-up holiday market on Saturday or Sunday, December 4th or 5th, between 12 and 4 p.m. The Belmont Art Association needs to know as soon as possible how many artists, photographers, and crafters would be willing to participate in a four-hour outdoor small work sales event. Artists would be responsible for their personal point of sale setup with some assistance from the organizers. Please contact the Belmont Art Association through belmontart.org if you are interested. For the seventh year, Belmont's veteran coordinator, Bob Upton, along with the Beach Street Center and East Cambridge Savings Bank, invited veterans to a breakfast the day prior to Veterans Day. The Belmont Journal was there. This is always a popular event. It's uh, for seven years now we've had the Belmont Veterans Breakfast. It's a good opportunity for us to join with members of the communities who support veterans issues, but also to gather with veterans from the different American Legion, AMVETS, uh, the different VFW posts. Uh, it's just a good time to gather with people, especially at this time of the year, and in particular what's going on in the country now with the pandemic and us all of us being uh, you know, somewhat more confined in our activities. It's a great opportunity for us to gather together and to appreciate the service and the commitment and the sacrifice that our members of our community who served in the armed forces or their family members who may have perished, all those folks that were injured in, in serving in combat, uh, those Purple Heart recipients that we have here in town. Our national anthem. Those of us who have not served um, uh, can't imagine some of the sacrifice and difficulties you've endured, and we're, we're grateful for your service. I do have a, a citation here, uh, or a, a proclamation, uh, from uh, the Senator's office and my office, and <clears throat> so I'll, I'll read that. Um, this is uh, from the State Senate. Be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends its congratulations to the veteran, Belmont veterans in recognition of their service, courage, and sacrifice. I'm so delighted that after uh, two years, we're back uh, offering the veterans this breakfast and, um, and being able to honor them in this way is really wonderful. I work for East Cambridge Savings Bank and we sponsor this breakfast for Belmont veterans here at the Senior Center in Belmont. We've been doing it for about seven years. I've been here for probably five out of the seven years. We serve the veterans. We, we help um, set the, you know, the room up in the morning and we, we serve the meals and, um, and we do it for the community and to give back to our veterans. for our regular weekly update with Franklin Tucker, editor of The Belmontonian. You can find The Belmontonian at belmontonian.com. This week, Franklin is interviewed by Frederic Rigolo. So Franklin, on Wednesday night, the Select Board and the School Committee had a, a joint meeting to pick their new, as a new School Committee member. So, and the, they picked someone who is very well known in the community. 
Yes, uh, one of the most uh, well-known uh, town officials we've had for the last 25 years, and that's Ralph Jones. Uh, as uh, Adam Dash, who is the uh, chair of the select board, noted, uh, Ralph is somebody who is, I think, the only person ever to hold uh, the chairmanship of the three big uh, <laughs> three big committees in town, which is the Board of Selectmen, the School Committee, and the Warren Committee. So he's very well known, very well versed in what's happening in Belmont. Um, so uh, it, 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 well, the process um, uh, started um, a week ago uh, when you know people were asked to submit resumes and things like that. We had twelve people who signed up for it. Uh, it turned out that only seven were, were going through the process. Uh, and it became clear uh, um, at the end of the process that uh, it came down to one of two people, and that was Ralph and Jeff Liberty, uh, a resident for many years here, who's very well, uh, who's also, whose uh, job has been as, as a um, principal and, and, and now doing uh, educational consulting. So he's very well, um, he's very well knowledgeable about education. So what do you think that they, they picked Ralph over Jeff Liberty? Well, there's two, there's two reasons. One, and, and, and this is very important, is that uh, Ralph is somebody who can start right away. I mean, he, he doesn't have to, um, you know, go around thinking, well, what does a school, what is a school committee and what is, you know, what is a person in that school committee supposed to do? He's done it. You know, he's gone through negotiations. He's gone uh, through, uh, through um, budgets. So that's going to be very important. He stated that he's only going to be around for five months. And he said, look, I'm, I'm not I'm not looking to have a, this as a springboard to as a full time position, but rather I'm going to help. That's what he that is what he wants to say. And I think some people said, you know, not only is he very knowledgeable, but that allows, uh, you know, an opening for the uh, for that seat to be so people can run for it. You know, they're, they're, it's going to be a real open, real exciting, I think, contest. And you'll see what the community really wants in, in, a, uh, in, in a school uh, committee member during that election. And second story that you are bringing us, uh, bringing to us is the local election se season seems far away, but we already <laughs> have one person who is seeking for a re-election. Yes, and that person is Roy Epstein, uh, who is running for re-election to the select board. Uh, Roy has been a little, you know, he, when, when I asked him a couple of months ago what, whether he's going to run for re-election, he said, I'm not going to tell right now. I'm going to see, you know, how much time I have and see what's going to be what's uh, happening with the town and i think that right now he thinks that he could be an asset um to uh, as a member of the uh, uh of a member of the board and roy has an interesting campaign team and his uh, campaign manager is ralph jones who we were just talking about and his treasurer is uh, elizabeth dion of, of, of many committees i should say in town um i think that that is a very strong group and um, Roy has some, um, you know, he, he, he does have a, you know, he does have an academic approach towards things at, at times and he can rub people the wrong way, but you know, he gets things done. You know, there are pe people who, 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 who praise him for his knowledge uh, about uh, uh, statistics and budgets and, and going really to the, to the heart of the issue. And um, he's really well liked over at, uh, over on uh, Belmont Hill because he wrote a very uh, important letter that went uh, to the state concerning the 91 beach, um, uh, uh, Beatrice Circle uh, affordable housing um, uh, development that's going up there. And um, uh, I think that he, uh, surprisingly enough, has uh, really uh, the feel of the town and may not, may not seem like he, he does, but he does. So it's, it's gonna be an interesting, it's going to be interesting because, you know, there were a large number of people who were very angry, especially last year around um, uh, election time uh, about the override. And there was all this talk about people wanting to get into the race, you know, to, to change the way Belmont was going. And uh, now this will, uh, let's see what, who will challenge Roy uh, in the seat. You know, he goes, he's, he's ahead of people in terms of uh, name recognition and he's got some very, uh, strong people on his team. So let's see what happens there. And now we have with us Fran Yuan of the Belmont LGBTQ Plus Alliance. Fran also is a member of the Belmont Human Rights Commission and Belmont Against Racism. November is Transgender Awareness 
Awareness Month, and Belmont will have a series of events honoring trans lives in the run-up to November 20th, which is Transgender Awareness Day. Fran, tell us about the events being held this year as a way of drawing more attention to transgender lives. Okay, thank you. Um, so the Alliance will be sponsoring a an installation. It's going to be a kind of a walkthrough installation where we will have transgender flags interspersed with um, biographies really of 43 transgender individuals who've been murdered this year uh, in transphobia violence. Um, so one of the, the transgender day of remembrance on the 20th is really about remembering this kind of violence that's perpetrated against transgender people. Something that we should all be aware of that it's just, um, it's one of the perils really of living openly in the world as a transgender person. So, um, so on Wednesday and Thursday of next week on the 17th and 18th at 6.30, we will have a kind of formal um, walkthrough um, together in, well, it's gonna be dark then. So we will have candlelight, cell phone candlelight <laughs> basically um, but it'll just be a way to really commemorate those lost lives and last year I think was the highest number of transgender people killed 44 um, that were recorded that were known um, so we don't know if there are others that were not identified as such but um, it's kind of a staggering number in the United States and this year we're on track for about the same number, so. So Fran, those are nationwide numbers and, and yes. yet um, transgender um, violence and, and hate incidents are also a, an issue here in Belmont. Can you tell us about that? Sure. Um, so we've had a couple incidents in the last two weeks, actually. One was um, using the slur and also threats against someone from another team. At a, at a sporting event. Um, and then another one was, well, there was uh, graffiti found at the Chenery and at the high school. Uh, it was against gays, uh, something that said, kill all gays. It was also anti-Semitic writings as well as anti-Black um, language use. So it's very concerning because um, you know, these are young kids, as young as in, you know, at the middle school level. And obviously, uh, they may think it's nothing. But for somebody who identifies in any of those groups, it's quite a frightening experience. And it's not just the experience of walking in and seeing that or hearing about it. But it's the kind of trauma that can stay with you, knowing that, that you're not necessarily safe. I mean, Maybe it's words, but as we can see with transgender violence, it can spiral out of control, um, certainly at the adult level. So, so Fran, it's something that that you know we, we should all be concerned about. But but for um, those looking to become more involved um, beyond um, the events that are taking place this year, do you have any recommendations about what they might do? Well, certainly, um, you know, when incidents happen in town, I think just voicing your thoughts about that, whether it's, you know, talking to the school uh, officials about whether uh, you feel that they have responded in the way that they need to. I think we can all get on board and voicing our thoughts. We can talk to the selectmen about, select board, sorry, about, um, you know, what, what we feel about things um, at the installation, there will be a signboard which will have some suggestions of things that people can do. And certainly one thing is to educate yourself about uh, what it means to be transgender, how it's different from sexual orientation, uh, how it might impact people's lives, um, and to just be aware of, of um, you know, the kinds of things that they might um, face as they live their daily life in Belmont. So I know that we have more and more transgender kids who are coming out and, and identifying as transgender in town. It's, it's um, quite remarkable in some ways as, uh, you know, it seems like it's come very quickly in the last five years that more and more students will openly identify themselves as transgender. Um, 
the select board this year issued a proclamation um, declaring uh, November Transgender Awareness Month and the 20th as Transgender Day of, Remem of, of Remembrance. So I think that's a really good move for the town to really get out there and really say um, that certain things won't be tolerated, that we really need to be aware of how we are interacting with one another. Um, and we're also gonna be meeting with the police to really look at adopting police transgender policies. So Fran, let me ask you, where can people go for more information about the upcoming events and Transgender Awareness Day? Okay, so um, Belmont Against Racism, which is our sort of parent group, the Alliance falls under Belmont Against Racism. If you go to belmontagainstracism.org, it will be listed on their calendar and you can click on it to find out all the details. Um, two of the events on the 20th, so there are the, um, vid, we call them vigils, I guess, at the installation. Uh, but two of the events, there's a film showing at one o'clock on the 20th, sponsored by the Belmont Library. You need to pre-register for that because it's gonna be by Zoom. Okay. And then the event that's hosted by Lex Pride and a lot of other towns, uh, neighboring towns will be on uh, at seven o'clock on the 20th. And you also need to register for that because that'll be held by Zoom as well. Well, thank you so much, Fran. And we, we do hope that the transgender awareness events are, are successful this year. Thank you so much for um, giving this that's needed attention to these events. Thank you. Belmont Light is looking for 150 households to participate in a one-year pilot program in which they will be charged the time of use rate in a real life setting. Maribel Carvajal de Salazar interviews Craig Spinali, Belmont Light Manager, about the program. Thank you, Craig, for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. Appreciate the time. So the first question of the day, what is a time of use pilot about? So the time of use pilot is a way for Belmont Light to investigate a dynamic uh, rate structure for our customers. Um, what we are doing will be shifting our peak times and our off peak times for electricity consumption by um, incentivizing our customers to use less, less electricity during the peak hours and more electricity in the off peak hours. Right, and what, how does it work? And so what we did is we looked at our um, use over the course of, uh, of the last 10 years or so, and we identified during um, our summer months, which are the June, July, August, and September months, from 1 p.m. to 7 p.m. as our peak hours, meaning that during those, that's when Belmont uses its highest uh, electricity usage during those hours. And then the non-summer months, which are all the other months besides those four, the other eight months of the year, from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m., we identified those hours as our peak non-summer um, hours. So, and then the rest of the time, the 18 hours, the rest of the day would be our off-peak times. Great. And who can sign up? So we have a, uh, an open invite to any and all of our customers we are looking to um, cap the amount of customers because this is a pilot. So we want to really explore the impact of, of these rates on our customers. And so we're, we're asking customers who really look at um, or, or really want to try to shift their usage to, to join our pilot and, and work with us. We, we have um, an open invite to all of our residential customers. So this is just a residential time of use pilot. So our commercial and our industrial customers are not included in this pilot. And so uh, in addition to the residential, there's different classes or different groups of people within those that rate that have different um, what we call DER devices, which are um, things such as solar on their roofs or uh, on their properties, um, whole house heat pumps, electric vehicle chargers, things of that nature. Um, we're trying to get a good cross of those types of customers, as well as, as, as our, what we call our regular residential customer, just the average customer that doesn't have any of these other devices in their homes. Um, so we're trying to get a good cross of all those. 
Yeah, and the benefits for the customers, what will it be? So the benefit is that the customer gets to be empowered to control their electric bill. And so if they are able to shift their electricity usage to those off-peak hours that I mentioned earlier, they will uh, lower their electricity bills. Um, and there's a, a flip side to that, which is the um, benefit to Belmont Light as a whole, which means that if we're buying less power during the peak time of the day, then our costs will be lower as well. And the, the double benefit to that to our customers is not only does the customer control their piece of it, but lower cost for Belmont Light is then provided back to the customer as uh, reduced rates to all of our customers. And a third um, uh, outcome of this is also to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. Um, so in a, without getting into great detail, what happens is in the electric world, when we have real high peak power periods, uh, generation that comes online to support that is usually fossil fuel fed. And so by us lowering our consumption, it helps the state meet its climate goals by not bringing on those peaker plants, as we call them, which, as I said, are typically fossil fuels. So the greenhouse gas reductions are a big piece of this as well. Great. Is the registration still open? Yes, the registration is open through the end of November. We're, so we're asking uh, or leaving it open until November 30th. And any customer who is interested can go on our website, belmontlight.com backslash, uh, excuse me, backslash time of use, and um, they can fill out the registration right there online. Okay, and where will the program start? So the program is slated to go live January 1st, 2022. It'll be a one-year program, so we will go right through December 31st, December uh, 2022, and reevaluate at that point uh, how the program works and whether we want to expand it or do something differently with the program. Great. Thank you, Greg, for all the information. And to know more, please go to Belmont Light's website. Thank you for watching. Every year, the Belmont Center Business Association organizes fun events like Turn on the Town to celebrate the end of the year holidays. Lee Gaston, owner of Betsy Blue on Leonard Street, gives us a sneak peek about what to expect. It's fully holiday season and Stores are stocked and ready for people to come and shop. And we have quite a few events that we're going to start rolling out, starting with a new event for Belmont Center, which is happening on Black Friday. So that's called Flannel Friday. And um, this is an event that I have attended quite a few times up in a little town in Vermont where my in-laws are from. If you wear flannel, any type of flannel, shirt, jacket, pajamas, and you go into a participating store, you'll get 10% off your entire purchase. So it's fun, everybody's cozy, comfy, and you walk around downtown and everybody sort of has a small town vibe and it kind of brings everybody together. It is just in Belmont Center. Um, there are about 10 to 12 participating businesses and Saturday is the Saturday after Black Friday. Um, flannel Friday. So we at Bessie Blue will run special promotions all weekend long. So we have the 10% off for Flannel Friday and we'll be doing things on Saturday for Small Business Saturday as well as Sunday. Every business in Belmont Center is doing something different, um, but Small Business Saturday is a really, really good time to remember that your neighborhood downtown center has awesome stores and we're all really working so hard to be able to bring you everything that you need for your holiday shopping without having to go to either the big corporate stores or to the mall. So that whole weekend will be full of discounts and all sorts of fun things. And then we do our annual turn on the town it will be Thursday, December 2nd. This is something we've done for years and years. Uh, the People's United Bank has graciously offered to host that, which they have done in the past. And it's from six to eight in the evening. They do the tree lighting. And there's all sorts of treats um, and fun happenings on that evening as well. And then the last big event that we're hosting is in place of our typical annual Midnight Madness. It's going to be called No Place Like Local. The stores will be open until 10 p.m. Everybody will be offering their own version of 
promotions, discounts, snacks, drinks, treats, um, and being open till 10 it gives a very festive and fun night of shopping. We have customers that we only see once a year for some of these events. Um, they do their annual Christmas shopping here, and we may not even see them you know, until the whole following year. And then in addition to that, I think just because of the climate of COVID right now and how people are feeling, starting to get back to work, trying to navigate what feels like sort of uncertain waters, being comfortable in your hometown, knowing that your town has what it needs to support you and your needs is sort of, it's pretty special. And now it's time for our community calendar. Belmont Books holds a launch of Allison Jean Lester's and photographer Andrew Garnett's new book, Glide, on Wednesday, November 17th at 6.30 p.m. Glide is described by author Chris Huntington as a novel with all the building menace of the best Stephen King, with the style and compassion of Anne Patchett. The event is free and on Zoom. Register at belmontbooks.com. Why are there so many turkeys? The Belmont Public Library and Habitat answer that question on Thursday, November 18th at 6.30 p.m. The native turkeys we currently see in such abundance in Massachusetts were exterminated not that long ago. Join online with Mass Audubon Habitat's Barbara Bates to listen to the true success story of the turkey's revival. Register at the Belmont Public Library website. Get ready for winter fun with the Belmont High School ski team. The team is holding a ski gear sale on Saturday, November 20th from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. at the Ski House, One Wheeler Road in Burlington, opposite Dunkin' Donuts. This year, Ski House will also be donating a percentage of sales from families that let them know the Belmont ski team sent them to the store. So if you go, don't forget to tell them that the Belmont ski team sent you. The 2021 Thanksgiving Interfaith Service will be held on Sunday, November 21st at 7 p.m. at the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints at 15 Ledgewood Place. This year, the theme is Knowing and Loving Our Neighbors, and the service is co-hosted by the Belmont Baha'i Community and the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Face masks are required to attend. The service also will be streamed live. More information can be found on the Belmont Religious Council website, belmontrc.org. And that's it for this week's edition of the Belmont Journal. I'm your host, Mike Crowley. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.